We are now on the record. My name is Stefan Hogue. I'm the videographer for Gulco Litigation Services. Today's date is December 13th, 2018. The time is 10.08 a.m. as indicated on the video screen. This video deposition is being held in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio in the matter of National Prescription Opiate Litigation, MDL number 2804. The opponent is Susan Joliffe. Will counsel please introduce themselves for the video record. Uh, Mark Dearman uh, from Robbins Geller Redmond and Dowd on behalf of the plaintiffs. Dorothy Antelis from Robbins Geller Redmond and Dowd on behalf of the plaintiffs. Jill Ogin and Porter Ryan on behalf of Cardinal Health. Castile Borse from Jones Day on behalf of Walmart. Alyssa Reedy from Ropes and Gray on behalf of Malincrot LLC, Malincrot's or Spec GX and uh, Susan Jolliffe. Andrew O'Connor from Ropes and Gray on behalf of Malincrot LLC, Spec GX and Susan Jolliffe. And the people on the phone? Paul Covington on behalf of the Who? Can you say that again? Could you repeat that? Yeah, Raj, R-A-J, uh, last name Paul, P-A-U-L, of Covington on behalf of McKesson. Anybody else on the phone? Hi, this is Jake Miller from Pharmaceutical Defendant. Luke Porter with... Hey. Court reporter today is Kimberly Keen. Can you please swear to notice? Ma'am, can I ask you to raise your hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you to keep your voice up so we can not hear you. Oh, sorry. Today. Sure. Just proceed. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mark Dierman. I introduced myself to you before we uh, started this morning. Um, we're going to be taking your deposition today. Um, what is your full name? Susan Jolliff. And what is your current occupation? Therapeutic specialist with Collegium Pharmaceuticals. And what is your business address? Mm, I work out of my house. And what is that address? Have you ever uh, given your deposition before? No. So I'm going to give you some ground rules as to uh, how we'll proceed. Um, I'm going to ask you questions. You need to answer those questions. It's important that we don't speak at the same time because otherwise our court reporter's fingers uh, may fall off. So uh, if you wait for me to ask my entire question, I will do my best to wait for you to provide your entire answer, okay? Yes. Right. It's important that you answer out loud. We all nod and we say, mm-hmm, and aha. Uh, that doesn't help give us a clean record, so answer out loud if you don't mind. Okay? Okay. Uh, unless your um, attorneys tell you, there's going to be objections that could occur, that may occur during the deposition. I hope there's not, but there might be. If one of the other attorneys objects to one of my questions, unless they instruct you not to answer, you can go ahead and answer the question. Okay? Yes. If you answer one of my questions, I'm going to assume that you understood it. So if you don't understand something that I ask you, just say, Mark, I don't understand that question. Can you please rephrase it? Okay. All right. uh, are you represented by counsel today? Yes. And who would that be? Andrew and Miss Alyssa. Okay. Um, do you have a written uh, retainer or representation agreement with either of them? I don't know what that question means. Okay. Um, do you understand what a written agreement is when I say a written agreement, something that's in writing? Yes. All right. So do you have something in writing that indicates that these folks are your attorneys? I got an email. Yes, so that was in writing. Okay. When did you get that email? A month ago. Okay. And who sent you that email? Ropes and Gray. Okay. Was it one of the individuals that's in the room today that would have sent you that email? Originally, it was um, Bill, someone. Okay. Let me exhibit number one. I'm going to show you what uh, plaintiffs are going to mark as exhibit number one to your deposition. You can please take a look at that. Okay, my first question is, have you ever seen that before? No. Uh, 
How is it that you found out about your deposition today? I got a phone call. Do you recall when that uh, phone call came? Like I said, I think it was a month ago or so. Who was that phone call from? I think his name was Bill. Okay. Was Bill an attorney? I'm not sure. Okay. What did you and Bill discuss? Objection. I'm sure not to answer the question. Bill is an attorney, and we're not going to get into the content of that communication. If you take a look at the exhibit that I uh, provide in front of you, exhibit number one, and you take a look at page four of that document, um, you see where it says Roman numeral three at the bottom, documents to be produced? Yes. Okay. Uh, had you seen that list, and when I say that list, on page four, there's a request to produce number one. On the second page, or page five of the document, request number two, and request number three. Have you seen that list? prior to me showing it to you today. No. What did you do to prepare for your deposition today, if anything? I met with Miss Alyssa and Andrew from Ropes and Gray. And when did you do that? Tuesday of this week, and then another day two weeks ago. So the first in-person meeting was two weeks ago, the second was Tuesday of this week? Yes. The meeting two weeks ago, who was in attendance? Same people. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Where did that meeting take place? Same location here in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Okay. And when you say same location, do you mean the Sheridan? Yes. Okay. How long did that meeting um, go on for? From nine to three. Okay. Did you bring any documents with you? to that meeting? No. Okay. Were you shown any documents at that meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, did any of those documents that you looked at, I mean, were those documents that you had seen recently? No. Objection, we're not going to get into anything that she reviewed with counsel. Okay. Did any of the documents that you looked at with counsel refresh your recollection as to um, any of the issues? Refresh, yes. Okay. Um, can you please tell me uh, what types of documents refresh your recollection? Objection. We're not going to get into what documents we looked at during meetings with counsel. Are you instructing her not to answer with regard to documents that refresh your recollection? I'm instructing her not to get into the specifics of the documents she reviewed with her counsel on the basis of attorney-client privilege. Okay. I'm going to ask. I'm, I understand the objection. I just want to make sure that we're clear and that the record is clear. I'm not asking her for all the documents. I'm asking her for the documents that refresh her recollection. As to those documents, are you instructing her not to answer? I'm instructing her not to answer with respect to any document she discussed with us because that reflects our attorney-client communications and work product in terms of our selection of those documents. So some, without telling me which documents, some of those documents did refresh your recollection, correct? Yes. Okay. Tell me about how many documents you looked at without telling me anything specific about the documents? Some. Okay. Um, is some more than 50 or less than 50? Less than 50. Is some more than 20 or less than 20? I'll say 20. Okay. Um, are, were those, did those documents include emails? Yes. Did those documents include presentations? Can you explain presentations? PowerPoint presentations. Yes. Um, did those documents include promotional materials? Objection. Again, we're not going to get into the content. Uh, I'm checking the base attorney client privilege and work product. And I'm instructing her not to answer any more details about the types of documents. I think you have the idea. Did you take any of the documents that you reviewed during that first meeting home with you? No. Any of the documents that you saw at that first meeting, did you already have possession of them? Meaning after you saw them, uh, did you actually come to the realization that you might have had them yourself or had possession of them? No. Yeah. The next meeting, which was Tuesday of this week, where did that occur? Same location, Sheraton, Highland Falls. And who attended that meeting with you? Same people, okay. Alyssa and Andrew from Ropes and Gray. How long did that meeting go on for? Nine to four. Okay. Um, as before, were you shown documents at that meeting? Yes. 
And again, did those documents as well refresh your recollection as to some of the issues? Yes. I'm not going to go through and ask what I did before based on your objection, counsel. Did you um, make any effort to search for documents that you had possession of, um, that you yourself had possession of? Yes. Okay. And can you tell me um, what you looked for, what kinds of documents you looked for? The only ones I had in my possession. Okay. And were you asked to do that? No. Okay. Um, when is it that you first started looking for documents? After the first meeting. Did you locate any documents? Yes. Okay. Did you bring those documents to the second meeting? No. Okay. What documents uh, did you um, locate that, was in your, that were in your possession? The only thing I had left from six years ago were items I saved to basically put into a brag book or to put on my resume so I would have them for my own recollection. They were just, you know, letters from previous bosses, that type of thing. All right. Uh, awards? Correct. Things like that? Okay. Uh, did you find any um, emails in your own uh, records? Yes. Okay. Um, and what types of emails? Some basically, you know, congratulations for doing this or that or thank yous. Um, anything else besides emails? Like rankings. Um, it's always important to see where you were among other, you know representatives so when you say rankings are you referring to documents that discuss your rank within the company yes and um, what is the significance of that I know you said brag. It was the only thing that I kept actually from those days of being with Malincrot so I could pass those on to future employees poor employers if they would hire me And were the rankings, um, were they, were they uh, graphs or charts? Uh, what what formula? List, lists of names. You may anticipate that you know what I'm going to ask. You probably do know what some of my next questions are going to be, but it's important for the record that you wait for me to answer my entire question before you start to answer it, okay? Okay. All right. It's completely human nature, but it just makes for a clean record. So besides rankings and awards, any other types of documents that you came across? No. Okay. Are uh, you being compensated for uh, your time today? No. Uh, were you compensated for your time for either of the two sessions that you uh, met with your attorneys? No. Okay. Exhibit two, please. Are you familiar with this document? Yes. Okay, what is it? My resume. Uh, do you know when this resume was prepared? No. Okay, maybe an easier question is, is this a current resume? No. Okay. Um, how would a current resume differ from this document? And if you need to take a look at it, uh, let, let me know. Uh, and I'm not asking you, you know, every line by line, but are there additional, em I, I assume there might be additional employment that isn't on this resume that may be on a more current resume? Yes. Okay. So um, what is the last place of employment or the most current place of employment that is reflected on Exhibit 2, your resume? Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Okay. And um, are you, you're no longer at Pfizer, correct? Correct. When did you leave Pfizer? 2011. Okay. And then after Pfizer, where did you go, if anywhere? Malincrot Pharmaceuticals. And how long were you there? 
until June of 15. And then after Mallinckrodt? Um, I was laid off for nine months. Then I went to the current place, Collegium Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Let's go um, back in time if we can in this resume to the uh, first job that you have reflected here. Is that King Pharmaceuticals? The first being the most recent or no. the first being the oldest? The oldest. The first being the oldest is Landmark Medical. Okay, I see that. Thank you. And Landmark Medical was in 1990? Correct. And what were your duties and responsibilities at Landmark? Exactly what it says on there. I sold medical devices to orthopedic physicians, physical therapists, and long-term care facilities. And you stayed at Landmark for how long? One year. Who was your direct report there? Can't recall. Fair enough. Um, and after Landmark, uh, what was your next place of employment? Medic drug stores. And how long were you there for? One year. What were your duties and responsibilities? I was responsible for selling home health care services to Cleveland area hospitals and medical professionals. Conducted in-services to diabetes educators, physical and occupational therapists. Do you know who your direct report was there? Shelley someone. Okay. Uh, why did you leave Medic Drug Stores? I went to go to Beckton Dickinson, which I felt at the time was a better job. So you voluntarily left? Yes. All right. And how long were you at Beckton Dickinson? Four years. And what did, were your duties and responsibilities there? Responsibilities there? I promoted and marketed all consumer diabetes products for Beckton Dickinson to Ohio, West Virginia, and Western Pennsylvania to 200 some accounts. Was that a sales position? Correct. And what territory was that? It was pretty much Ohio, but obviously I went to different states. And who was your direct report there? Andrea Rossiter. <coughs> and why did you leave Becton? For Bristol Myers, they came calling. All Actually, right. that's not true. Becton Dickinson laid us off. No, no, I'm sorry. That I left. I left. I'm sorry. I left for for Bristol Myers. Okay. And how long were you at Bristol Myers? For two years. And what what'd you do there? I sold generics. At at uh, BMS, the independent pharmacies, hospitals, retail and wholesale accounts, regional accounts and pharmacies, pharmacy buyers. Uh, what type of generics did you sell? Antibiotics through every, everything that basically Bristol Myers made for, for generics. Any Schedule II uh, drugs? Not that I recall. Okay. Who was your direct report there? Andrea Roster. I say that wrong? My direct report at Becton Dickinson was Ted Long. I apologize correct myself and okay. my direct report at Bristol Myers was Andrea Rossiter. Okay and what was your was your territory also in Cleveland Ohio at uh, Bristol Myers? Cleveland Ohio yes. Okay um, you left Bristol Myers uh, voluntarily? They, they laid us off at Bristol okay. Myers. Okay and where did you go next? Then I went to Dura Pharmaceuticals. Is that located on this resume? <laughs> it should be, but apparently I missed that. Dura Pharmaceuticals eventually got bought by King Pharmaceuticals, who then eventually got bought by Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. So Dura must not be on here. Okay, so when you left Bristol, you ended up going to Dura, which turned into King, Correct. which turned into Pfizer. Correct. Okay. And you started at... Uh, Dura in 1998? I'm looking at... Yes. Eight. Okay. And from 1998 to 2003, you were a sales representative? Correct. In Akron, Ohio? Yes. And uh, what were your responsibilities and duties as a sales representative? Sold to various physicians, various products, pharmaceuticals, Sold to sleep hypnotics, antispasticity, antibiotics, 
allergy pharmaceuticals directly to specific uh, specialty pharmacists, pharmacies or physicians. Between 98 and 2003, um, were you selling any uh, Schedule II no. drugs? Now, under, the, so under that sales representative block, you have a list of awards. You see that? Yes, underneath the 2003? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first one is 2002 President's Club Award. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Wh what, is that? what does that mean? Does that notate? President's Club is, is the highest award that you can get in sales for this company. And when you say the highest award, uh, uh, just so that I understand, what, what do you mean by that? What are you being recognized for? Sales. Achieving sales goals. Okay. And that's 43 out of 448? So I was the 43rd person out of 448 people, yes. And these other awards likewise are related to um, your achievements with regard to selling whatever the particular product was? Correct. In 2003, it looks like uh, your position changed to specialty sales representative. Yes, they created a neurology division. So is the reason that your title changed is because they started the neurology? Right, department? neurology that eventually became pain, yes. It started as neurology though? Yes, okay. initially. And it says your territory there was Cleveland, Ohio? Yes. Correct. So was that a larger territory than it was earlier? Cleveland is larger than Akron. Right. So, yes. Okay. And um, what were your duties and responsibilities as a specialty sales representative between 2003 and 2008? Pretty much the exact same thing as I just described, selling to specific physicians, specific products, it was more on a specialty basis than just um, family practice or internal med physicians. Any Schedule II drugs between 2003 and 2008? Yes. Which ones? Avinza was scheduled. And then Embedda, but Embedda was after 08. I believe. Okay. Are those the two scheduled drugs that you sold, whether it be for Dura or King? Or Let me look, make sure. Yeah, no problem. As far as I can remember, yes. Was that a promotion from sales representative to specialty sales representative? Yes. Um, were the doctors, uh, well, well, strike that. Uh, who was it you were selling those, um, those drugs to? Who, who, who was it that you were dealing with? So with Avinza and Embedda? Is that what you're asking, yes. Mark? Yes, yes. Not Scalaxin? I'll ask you about Scalaxin, too. Scalaxin. Yes, so... It was pain physicians, orthopedists, neurology possibly, and some internal med family physicians at that time. And at what point in time did Dura become king, if you know? If you know. 98, it looks like it's king. 1998, king bought Dura. According to my resume. Okay. And then again, um, between 2000 and uh, 
2003 and 2008. Actually, if we go up to the first page of your resume um, under King Pharmaceuticals, which does, I see it now, it's 1998 through 2010. Mm -hmm. um, from 08 to 2010, you were a senior specialty sales rep? Yes. All right, so you were a sales representative from 98 to 03, a specialty sales rep from 03 to 08, and then a senior specialty sales rep from 08 to 2010. Correct. So, Correct. All right. So what are the what's the difference then between your duties and responsibilities as a senior specialty sales representative, which you were from 08 to 210, and what you were doing as a specialty sales rep from 03 to 08? If you if you know. Not really a major difference. It was a promotion according to the company standards. And as a senior specialty sales representative um, at King Pharmaceuticals, uh, what uh, drugs was it that you were responsible for? So at King, we promoted Scalaxin. It was a Venza, but then that went by the wayside. We launched Embedda. We had Flector Patch. And that is it. All right, so there, give me those three again, if you don't mind. Scalaxin, uh -huh. Avinza, yep. Embedda, Flector Patch. How do you spell that patch? Flector, F-L-E-C-T-O-R. Okay. Patch. Were these all scheduled drugs? No. Which ones were scheduled drugs? Avinza, uh -huh. Embedda. And what type of drug was Avenza? Morphine. And how about Embedda? Morphine. How big was the, uh, were you in the sales department, I assume? Field sales, yes. Yeah. How many people at King from, um, we'll go with 2008 to 2010, how many people, uh, other salespeople, were there in that department, if you know? How big was the department? 120 people, it says here, underneath 2010 for the specialty division, the pain division. And the pain division was your division? Correct. And um, what kind of drug is Scalaxin? <clears throat> A muscle relaxant. And what is Flector, the Flector patch? It's basically the, a patch for, uh, an, like an NSAID diclofenac patch and um, were you promote were you promoting all of these drugs to all of your accounts during that period of time correct yes uh, did King pharmaceuticals provide you with any uh, formal training uh, as it relates to promoting uh, these drugs yes uh, is that something that you can point to on your resume, or is that just something that you know? Injection to form. I just saw you look, that's why I... There's nothing on here about formal training. Okay. Um, can you please tell me, uh, at, at <coughs> King, uh, the formal training that uh, they would have provided you? We had two weeks of initial training, back when it was Dura Pharmaceuticals. So when would that have been? So Dura was... Uh, 90, 98 okay. when I started, so that was a two-week training at that point. Then they had a halfway kind of point training, intermediate training. Uh, then, of course, we had always, you know, um, we always had to do training documents along the way. Uh, couldn't give you a schedule, but we were always doing training. All right. Uh, the f two weeks that you talked about initially, uh, what did that entail? Uh, and I know it was a long time. I had, a long time ago. I understand. It was training on the products, tests every single day. And who were the, for lack of a better word, professors, teachers? That's a strong word. Probably professors, but <laughs> teachers. Teachers. Um, ooh, I keep hitting this cord, sorry. Um, 
One guy's name was Rob Philo. I'm not sure why I remember that, but. Uh, and I'm not as interested in their names as to what you could tell me about. Were they doctors? Were they healthcare professionals? They were. They were trained. They were the trainers at the company. Okay. Were they healthcare professionals? If you know. No. Okay. Now, back at that time, you were not promoting any Schedule II drugs, correct? Not in 08. Yeah. So the half, let's go to that, what you referred to as the half point training that you were talking about. I, I say that, and I don't know when that half point was, but it was at some, it was, it was not the initial training. It was like the intermediate training, but I, I honestly can't recall when that was. Do you recall when you started promoting Schedule II drugs, whether or not you would have received any additional formal training? So that when you went from whatever drugs you were selling to the Schedule drugs, was there a, uh, a training that you received? Injection Absolutely. to form. And um, so that wouldn't have been the initial, that initial course because you weren't doing it then, correct? Correct. At the half point, do you know if you were doing it at that point? I don't remember what products I had at the halfway point. Okay. Um, but there did came a, come a time where you were promoting Schedule Twos and where you received some training relating to that, correct? Absolutely. You have to get trained on products that you sell. Okay. Can you ballpark when you started uh, selling Schedule Two at King? Avinza was the first one. Um, that's when they created the, the 2007 I believe they started the pain division, mm -hmm. if I can read this correctly on my own resume. So Avinza would have been the first one. We had Avinza and Sklaxon at that time. And do you remember what type of training you received as it related to your promotion of Avinza? We, we basically got trained on the product, of course, how it worked black box warnings, package insert, everything you need to know to sell a product. And were you um, selling these to your same, I mean, was, it, was it pretty much the same accounts for you while you were at King? As when? Uh, from the time that you started? No, because I had different medications. When I started, I had antibiotics, which, of course, a pain physician would not do. Okay. I had allergy medicines, same thing. All a right. pain physician would not do. So when did you first get into the pain division? According to my resume, 2007. So from 2007 until 2015, when you left Malincrod, uh, would your accounts have been the similar type doctors? Objection to form. Yes. So from company to company, would you have been dealing with some of the same doctors, the same accounts? Objection. Yes. And again, in I, I see you have, you have something on the first page, awards 2010. There are uh, additional um, notations of awards that you uh, would have received? Correct. And these awards were related to um, uh, your standing at the company as it relates to what, 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 um, what your rankings were? Correct. And uh, in 2010, did you leave King Pharmaceuticals? Or did they become Pfizer? They became Pfizer. Okay. And how long were you at Pfizer? Just until I went to Malincrot, which was later on in 2011. Okay. From uh, 2008 to 2010 at King, who was your direct report? Bill Wagren. From 2010 till the time you left Pfizer, who was your direct report? Bill Wigren. When the company changed from King to Pfizer, um, it looks like it looks like you now have become you you were a senior specialty sales representative. Now you're an executive specialty sales representative. Do you see that? 
Where is that? I'm just looking under Pfizer, under 2010 to present. Oh, I'm sorry, the title, yes. Yeah. So what were the difference between your duties and responsibilities as executive specialty sales rep versus senior specialty sales rep? I don't recall. Um, were there different drugs that you were selling when uh, King was taken over by uh, Pfizer? Yes. And what were those drugs? So we sold Lyrica and Celebrex and continued to sell Flector Patch. And in addition to that, were you selling the Schedule II drugs that we had talked about earlier? No. Okay. While at Pfizer, were you uh, responsible for selling any Schedule II drugs? So we had Embedda at King, and right. when Pfizer bought us, uh -huh. I think they pulled it from the market at that time, and then we just promoted the Lyrica, Celebrex, and Fletcher Patch, if my memory is correct. And were you promoting Lyrica and the Flexor Patch for the same things that you had previously been promoting in Beta for, or are they different? Objection. They're different. Okay. Do you know why Embedda was taken off of the market? My, what I, my understanding of that, Embedda had morphine plus naltrexone, and the naltrexone it was something with an naltrexone that wasn't working correctly or something and they pulled it. All right, we'll talk about naltrexone a little bit later. Um, so while at Pfizer for that roughly year period from 2010 until the time that you left to go to Mallinckrodt, um, were you responsible for promoting any uh, Schedule II drugs? Once they pulled them better, no. Why did you leave Pfizer? I didn't want to work for Pfizer. All right. Um, did you tell me who your direct report was at Pfizer? You didn't ask me. Okay. Who's your direct report at Pfizer? Dan and Stefan. Why didn't you want to work for Pfizer? Because they're a massive company. Any other reasons? They were going to promote, well, they were going to demote me back to being just a, a regular primary care specialist and most of my experience was in pain. Uh, had they, so, so had they demoted you from pain to uh, regular primary care specialist, do you believe that that would have uh, impacted your income? No. You believe that you would have received the same compensation between base salary and bonuses and incentives e with either line of drugs? I know I would have, yes. Uh, would it have required you to go out and um, basically find new accounts because it was a di they were different drugs? No. Okay. Um, you didn't have to find accounts for Lyrica and Celebrex, trust me. Okay, and, and what do you mean by that? They were very well-known products at the time. Okay. But they would have been different accounts, correct? Correct, but I wouldn't have to find them. Understood, because they were well-established drugs. Correct. So you, you said that they were a large company. Uh, what, what was your hesitation for working for a, a large company, or a massive company, I think you said? Objection. If you can see from my resume, I had worked for smaller companies, and that's what I preferred. Okay, so now we're jumping off of this resume uh, onto the more current, and uh, you left Pfizer uh, to go to? Mallinckrodt. And you started roughly 2011? Correct. Um, and who was your direct report when you started at Mallinckrodt? Kevin Becker. Going back a second to my question about Pfizer, um, 
you had you had initially said it was a demotion and you didn't want to uh, take it, and so that's what triggered me to ask you: Was there going to be a different in a difference in compensation? Why would it have been a demotion to go back to or go to um, regular? Uh, I think you said general treatment or general care. Objection. In title only, was it a demotion? You were no longer calling on special specialists. You were calling on primary care. In my eyes, that was a step backwards because I had already become a specialty pharmaceutical and I, from, you know, a rep. Okay, so by going into the into the, the the pain division, that's the specialty that you're referring to. You would have lost that specialty if you went into uh, if you if you if you had accepted that other position. Any Objection. specialty is better than primary care. It doesn't matter what you're selling. Any specialty pharmaceutical position is better, regardless if it's pain or if it's, I called them psychiatrists at one point, that was a great specialty. Um, neurologists, I called on them. Orthopedists were especially. If I'm family practice, I, I felt I had already done that and moving past it to a specialty, you know, physician was a um, uh, better, you know, of course, a better opportunity. And, and, I'm, and I'm just trying to figure out, and I'm sure it's me that's just not understanding it, why it's a better opportunity, why, why, why the, what, the, what the, the difference is to you if the compensation is the same. There's a lot of things that come with being a primary care rep. Um, there are primary care physicians see multiple, um, you know, disease states, if you will, different. And, and it's just um, a lot, it's just a different cell, um, basically. A different cell, C E L L. A different cell, yes. Oh, cell, C E L L. C E L L. Okay, and what do you mean by that? Not C cell. I'm sorry. Yes. S E L L. Yes. Okay. Yes. A different cell. Um, so you 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 go to Malincrot. Your supervisor is Kevin Becker, correct? Objection. Correct. Just to take a second and talk about your education, what is the highest level of education that you completed? Bachelor degree. And where was that? Bowling Green State University. And that was a bachelor degree in what? Science. And to get a bachelor degree in science, uh, how much uh, science type course work did you uh, take? A lot. Can you be any more specific than a lot? I mean, how many years are we talking about? A four year degree bachelor. I only had one accounting class, if that narrows it down. Have you yourself had any personal experience um, with uh, the use of opioids? Myself taking opioids? No. Um, any personal experience with the opioid epidemic? Uh, anyone that's close to you that had any issues with regard to opioid use? Objection. Yes. Uh, who is it that um, had some issues with regard to opioid use? And when was that? 2016. Um, do you know what opioid? Fentanyl and heroin. Um, what ended up happening to you? When was that? 2016. How did that impact you? Had an impact on your family as well? Do you know what he did for a living? Yes. Do you know anything about the, uh, the li what, what do you know about the litigation that we're here about today? Not much. 
Do you know who the plaintiffs are in the litigation? Plaintiff is a new term for me. Okay. Um, do you know that the that there are cities and counties and even some states across the country that are plaintiffs that have brought litigation against uh, the manufacturers and others of opioids? Are you Head aware of that? Headlines, yes. Okay. Um, do you know that that's sort of why we're here today? Yes. Okay. So, so you understand that the plaintiffs, the people that filed the cases, are in some cases cities, uh, in some cases counties, and in some situations states? Objection. Yes. Okay. Um, has that experience um, with regard to your neighbor uh, caused you to have any ill will um, or, or bad feelings towards uh, anybody in this litigation? No. Okay. Um, in addition to the manufacturers as defendants, uh, there, are the there are also drug distributors that are defendants. Are you aware of that? Yes. Had you had any, um, do you know what opioid use disorder is? No. Uh, do you know whether you've had any employees that, uh, co-employees that you worked with that had, that, that used opioids? Not that I'm aware of. How many years were you at Mallinckrodt? Three and a half plus. Late 2011 to June, and they laid us off in 2015. I'm going to show you what is marked as exhibit number three. This document um, has and just so you know, when I say to the word, when I'm talking about Bates ranges, if you look in the bottom right corner of the document, you see where it says MNK hyphen T1 underscore 00000264? Yes. And if you go to the end of that document, it ends in 287. That's a Bates range, just so you understand when I refer to that um, during the depot. A what range? Bates, B-A-T-E-S, Bates range. New terminology. That's, okay? hard. That's yeah. hard to see. Fast, right. yes. Um, have you seen this document or something that looks like this document before? Yes. Okay. Uh, when would be the first time that you would have seen something like this? This exact document or just a document that looks like this? Yeah, so so I, I would refer to this as an organizational chart. Um, do you, you have that same uh, point of reference? Yes. Okay. So when was the... And I will represent to you that this is an organizational chart for Mallinckrodt that was provided to us by Mallinckrodt. Um, so I'm not asking if you've seen the exact uh, organizational chart because you'd have to go through every one of these names. I'm asking if you've seen something similar to this. Objection. Yes, for every company I've ever worked for. Okay. Now, if you turn to... Bates range number 269, so that I can refer to that page number that way, um, you will see in the top right corner, it says McGowan. Do you know who McGowan is? Yes. Who is McGowan? He was the regional manager. I think that was his title. And when you say regional manager, regional manager of what? Of a region. Okay. Do you know what region? He obviously had Ohio because that's where I lived, but I don't know his specific specific region. What were you hired uh, as? What was your title at Mallinckrodt? Objection. That's not on my resume. Sales rep? I don't know what they called us. Okay. So if you look at that page that I directed you to, 269, do you see your name in that box? Yes. All right. Underneath it, do you see where it says Senior Field Sales Spec Pharma? Yes. Do you know what that means? Senior. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Field sales spec was specially pharma. Okay. Was that your title? Must have been. Okay. Um, while at Mallinckrodt, did your title ever change? No. Well, no, I lied. Oh, I didn't lie. I'm sorry. 
it didn't it changed because we became um they, we basically became hospital reps if you will um i think it changed i don't i, I don't know what exact title but it was uh it was um we we sold uh, iv tylenol at the end at Mallinckrodt. And I think they changed our titles to a, something in the hospital. Okay, so so when when again did you start? September of October 11 for uh, Mallinckrodt. October 11, October of 2011. Yep, it says right here, October 17, 2011. Okay. And we know your title there. Um, do you know when, from October 17 to 2011, until the time you left, do you know when your title first changed? It would have been only one change, and it was um, towards the end. So that was uh, in in 15. I best right. recollection. Right. We may we may get to some other documents that refresh your. Okay. Your and maybe they didn't change our title, but I know we we call on different uh, specialties, so maybe they never changed it. But so when you started there, let's talk about that. What specialties were you um, promoting to? Um, pain, orthopedists. Uh, I don't know, neurology, neurology, possibly, um, and some family practice, and maybe a couple internal med. Well, physical med and rehab, of course, was a title, and then pain physicians, anesthesiologists, be official and did that remain the same throughout your tenure at Mallinckrodt um, towards the end we called on surgeons okay. and, and acute um, uh, surgical centers ambulatory, and, ambulatory care centers actually okay and what was the reason that you added I'm assuming added surgeons and acute uh, ambulatory. We took on and started to sell uh, Firmev, which was their IV Tylenol at Malacron. What drug was it that you said you? It's called uh, Firmev. Is that a scheduled drug? No. Okay. With during, I, IV acetaminophen, I should say, not Tylenol. Okay, so during the time that you were at Malacron, besides Firmev, um, what other drugs did you promote? We had Exalgo and Pensed initially. Then we had Zartemis, and then eventually uh, Afrimef. Okay, so the page that we're looking at of the organizational chart, page 269, it shows Kirk Dumont at at the top. Who is Kurt Dumont? So he was my boss at one point in time at Malincrot after Kevin Becker. Okay, so Kevin Becker was a, what was his title? He was my hiring district sales manager. Okay. And, and I'm sorry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and you, do you see his name somewhere else on this org chart? No, I was looking back to see McGowan, Gavin McGowan. Okay. And so your direct report was Kirk Dumont? Yes. For what period of time? If you recall. He was at the end, so... Uh, maybe the last year I was there. I don't recall. All right. So Kevin Becker was the first person that you reported to? Correct. Okay, after Kevin, who, uh, who was your next report? Kirk Dumont. Okay, so you were reporting to Kevin for most of your time at Mount For most of my time, then yes. Okay. Um, besides Kirk's name being at the top, the other folks that are listed on here, are these the same people that you would have been working with? Yes. All right. And um, were these folks all responsible for a certain territory or certain territories? Objection. Yes. 
Okay. So I see Kirk's name up there. Um, who, James McKay, who's he? No idea. I don't remember that name. Okay. Um, what was your territory, uh, and did it change while you were at Mallinckrodt? It was, it was entitled Akron, Ohio. Uh, it was entitled Akron, but did it include a territory larger than what we would call formerly Akron? I basically went Akron and South. I had Cleveland with the other companies in my past, but with Mallinckrodt, I did not have Cleveland. Okay. And so I'm a little geographical challenged here. South of Akron is what? There's, <laughs> I had, Sorry. no, no, it's, uh, so there's Canton, there's Dover, New Philadelphia, and we're down towards Zanesville, uh, it was it was big geography. Okay. Was it a larger ter was it a large territory? It was large ge geographic territory. Okay. When you left uh, Pfizer and came to Mallinckrodt, um, were you, while at Mallinckrodt, promoting to any accounts that you had been promoting to previously? With Pfizer. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, were you promoting to any accounts that you had been dealing with it? At King? Yes. And at Dura? And if I'm going back too far, we can stop at King. That's fine. Whenever I picked up a Vinza, I've had similar uh, customers. And, and Scalaxin. And is that because that was starting to get into the pain? Correct. Okay. And orthopedists, too. Because Flector Patch, Scalaxin were all orthopedists. And I had Flector at, well, Flector at Pfizer, but I had Pensed with Mallinckrodt. Is it a, uh, is it a, is it a, a plus for someone who starts a when you were leaving Pfizer and coming to Mallinckrodt? Was it a plus that you had dealt with some of the same accounts that you would be dealing with when you started with uh, Mallinckrodt? Objection. Do you understand that question? What do you mean by plus? Yeah, you know, uh, somebody who goes to a specific school and gets some specific training, it might be a benefit to their new employer. I'm wondering if because you had been dealing with some of the same accounts, was that a benefit that Mallinckrodt saw that said, hey, uh, you've been dealing with some of these same people? Objection. I'm sure they felt that it was, you know, since I knew some of the same customers, uh -huh. I didn't have to, you know, Mary and Jane in the front, that type of thing. Yeah, okay, well, instead of asking you what, and I, and I don't know that I was really, asking you whether they saw that, did you see it as a benefit? I didn't see it as a benefit, but I obviously, I knew these customers for a couple of years, so I felt it was, benefit's probably a strong word, but was there an advantage? I wouldn't say advantage. It was more of a, you know, it's like going, well, yeah, fine. You can say advantage if you want. Okay, thank you. Um, so do you, did anyone else on this page share that territory with you or was that your territory? Objection. My territory. Now, you had provided me with the lists of the type of healthcare professionals that you were dealing with. Within your territory, are there other healthcare professionals that somebody else might be dealing with Objection. besides you from the same company? Does that make sense? No. Okay. Um, pain doctors, uh, and, and I'm, I can ask you to list all of the, 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 the specialties that you were promoting to in your territory. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, did you promote to dentists? No. Okay. Um, so was someone else from the company possibly selling something to dentists that would be in your territory? Objection. I'm trying to figure out whether or not... There was nobody else in my territory but me. Okay. So the only doctors that were being promoted to in your territory were the types of doctors that you previously discussed and that you were promoting to? Objection. They were the pain physicians, orthopedist physicians, yes. Same ones I listed before.
so you listed for me Exalgo, Pensade, uh, Zardamus, and Affirmance? Affirmative. Affirmative. All right. When you started um, with uh, Malincrot, uh, they didn't have all of those medications, though, correct? Correct. Which did they have when you started? Exago and Pensed. What's Pensed? It's a topical NSAID. Uh, topical. What's, I'm sorry. Topical NSAID, topical diclofenac. That is not a scheduled medication? Okay. What is Exago? What is Exago? Yes, ma'am. It's a hydromorphone, once a day. Um, what's roxicodone? No idea, I didn't sell it. Okay, what about methadone? Never sold it. Okay. Um, do you know if Malincrot sold either of those medications? I don't know if they sold those or not. Okay. Um, so when you started at Malincrot, you were aware that you were going to be promoting Exalgo and Pensate? Correct. And uh, you started in uh, October of 2011. I think you said you left sometime in 2015. Objection. I didn't, I didn't leave. <coughs> they laid us off in, two, in June 2015. Okay. So they laid you off, but you left? No, they laid us off. Okay. You're no longer there? Correct. All right. And that was in 2015? Between yes. uh, October 2011 and 2015, were you always promoting Exago? No. When, uh, so I know you started in 11, when did you stop promoting Exago? It went generic. And I'm not sure. It went generic? It went generic, and I'm not sure when that was. But at the end, we really were only selling a Firmev. Um, and maybe Zartemis, if it was still around. Do you know when you started promoting Zar Zartemis? Zartemis? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know when that product came out, but it was after. What, what kind of training, let's talk about Exago, what type of training were you provided with as it related to, uh, and I'm asking you about formal training, that you were provided with as it related to promoting Exago, selling Exago? Like at all the other companies that I was with, initial training, two weeks. Council, we've been around this a little over an hour, maybe it's time for a five or ten minute break. Sounds good to me. Going off record at 11, 12 a.m.